Welcome to Factory Spotlight. We're in front of Haas Automation in Oxnard, California today. And today, we're going to give you a tour of the demo room. I'm Brian, he's Andrew. And Andrew, let's head through these doors and take a look. All right, let's head through the front doors here. And we're gonna head off to the right towards the demo room. Uh, as you can see, we got several trophy cases from all the different various uh, race car wins we've got. Uh, driver's suits, helmets, memorabilia, of course. But here we go into the demo room. You can see the sign there. And uh, you're gonna start us off, right, Brian? I'm gonna get rolling. The first thing as you walk through the doors, you can't help but notice a car. So why do we have a race car in the demo room? Well, this is the car driven by Kurt Busch in March of 2014. And it was his first win as a member of Stuart Haas Racing. And as you can probably see, this car is in the exact same condition as it was when it came out of Victory Lane. It's covered in, I don't know, beer, champagne, Gatorade, you name it. Pretty cool accomplishment and we haven't even touched it. We literally rolled it right in here. Right behind me, this is kind of the star of the show. This is the very first machine ever built by Haas Automation. If you've ever seen our mill names, VF1, VF2, VF3, et cetera, this is the VF1. And that name comes from, remember we had no marketing department back in the day. VF1 stands for very first one. Back in 1988, the goal was to build and sell a machine for under $50,000. And that's exactly what uh, Gene and his team accomplished. This went to IMTS in 1988. We had a couple of folding tables and one machine. We sold a whole bunch of machines. It still runs. I'm not gonna turn it on today, but the thing still operates. Um, you can also see, really before even the first machine, the way Haas Automation started is Gene started making rotary indexers. Put a stepper motor on an indexer and instead of indexing that thing manually, now you had a powered indexer. Um, also in here, we sold our 200,000th machine a few years ago and the customer was so appreciative. They have many Haas machines. It was a UMC 750 that they made this and actually presented it to Gene at IMTS. So pretty cool piece of memorabilia here. All right, so we're gonna go from one of our oldest machines to perhaps one of our newest offerings. Um, as you can see, this is our small footprint ST10 turning center that's married up to what we call the Haas robot package. And this is the smallest robot that we're offering right now. It's got a seven kilogram payload, six axis robot. And what's really uh, kind of amazing about this assembly is that for the same price that we were asking for that, for that VF1 initially at 50K, you get this entire robot package for $50,000. Um, that gives you this safety closure on the outside. The robot, of course, itself, um, it comes standard with a single gripper. There's also an option for a dual gripper. Um, the base, the whole, all the mounting hardware, the robot controller. But what's really kind of the most important and the, and the most useful for an operator or an owner is that this thing is plug and play, ready to go. There's no robot integrator needed or anything like that. And the beauty of it is that when it comes time to programming the robot, all of that is handled through the Haas control. Um, we use a series of menus in our familiar VPS system. And through those menus, you control the programming of the robot and you also jog the robot with our remote dog handle, which has been updated to control the robot. So just a fantastic package and a really easy entry into the world of automation. Moving on, let's go over here to this VF2 SSYT. Um, the VF2, of course, is one of our best sellers, um, our small footprint uh, VMC. Um, but this is the Super Speed Y variation. Super Speed, of course, gives you faster rapids and cutting speeds, 14, 1400 inch per minute rapids, um, 12K spindle, uh, 30 pocket Super Speed tool changer. And then in this case, the Y option gives you additional Y axis travel for a deeper work envelope this way. All right, that pretty much wraps it up here for the VF2 SSYT. Let's throw it over to Brian. All right, as Andrew said, right next to the VF2 SSYT, we've got the DT1. Now, DT stands for drill tap. This is a super fast little machine, 2,400 inch per minute rapids, tool change in under a second, um, but it's got great milling capability too. It's got a 15 horsepower spindle. Speaking of spindles, 10,000 RPM is standard. You've got 12, 15, and 20K optional. So if you're drilling a lot of small holes and you want that high RPM, you can get it with this machine. 
Now on the table here, we've got a real fast two axis rotary. This is what we call our TRT 100. So DT1 with the TRT 100, you have full simultaneous five axis or just three plus two capability. Now we're gonna move from the DT1 just to the right here to the UMC 500 SS. So this happens to be an SS, a super speed, but we have the non SS as well. This is the smallest of the UMC family. So this is the UMC 500. We also have the UMC 750. And then the big boy is the UMC 1000. Now the nice thing, the great thing about the UMC 500 is its size. It's a compact footprint, similar in size to a VF2. So if you have a small shop, but you're wanting five axis capability, this machine will fit in your shop. And the cool thing about it, as you can see here with this low door, is you have great access. So if you're loading and unloading parts, it's easy in this machine. Now, as we come around to the side, we've got a big side window here. And the reason this is designed in is we'll have the ability to add either an APL, an auto parts loader, or even a pallet pool to this machine. So lots of capabilities with all our UMCs. Now we're gonna move just to my left and Andrew's on the VF3YT50. As Brian was saying, VF3YT. Now what's special about this machine, it's of course our, our medium footprint VMC. But in here you see, we're kind of the star of the show here, 50 taper spindle, if you're doing lots of hogging, but you want to do that in a space that doesn't take as much as one of our really big ones, like a, a VF8 or a VF10 or something. If you don't need quite that much table space to travel, then this fits the bill. Um, 50 taper spindle, 30 pocket, 50 taper tool changer, Really, if you're getting to do some hogging, but you need to do it in a, in, a, in a smaller space, this is the machine for you. Moving on, let's go over to, let's go to this one here. So this is our new long bed ST30. Uh, ST30 L, LY, Y axis uh, lathe in this case. And of course, you're gonna buy this machine because you need to machine, you need to turn long parts, or maybe you need to turn intermediate length parts. And maybe you want to do that with, uh, Maybe you want to do that with our steady rest. So you're kind of in uh, one of two situations here. Either you're going to run a really long part in which you're going to support it by the tail stock, or maybe you've got an intermediate length part that you're going to support with your steady rest for doing deep hole drilling and end work on that shaft. Very easy to move the steady rest back and forth. But another cool thing is, let's say I've got this little part in here. Now, if I've got a part like this, this experience is pretty much just like running a regular ST30. If I'm running a short, uh, a short part, this is gonna be the same as when I'm running an ST30. So that's really nice. Um, another cool feature about this machine is you can see this, this hole here, if you will. This is what we call the extended Z pocket. And this gives you a lot of clearance for, uh, for boring bars and other really long tools. So you can still get all the way up here to turn on the face of your part and you're not, gonna, you're not gonna hit those tools against the bulkhead here. So, SD30 long bed, great machine. Let's move on over here to, this, uh, to the APL. Now, this is another example of how to put automation to work in your shop for a really reasonable price. Um, here we're marrying uh, our automatic part loader up to the SD15Y. So you've got Y-axis capability on this small footprint lathe, and then you're gonna auto feed those parts auto load those parts here from this table using this arm and kind of like the robot allows you to in fact our programming process is very similar to how it works on the robot it really started with the APLs all of that is controlled from within the, the Haas control here so you use a, a series of EPS templates it just walks you through I've got these these gifs on screen here um, to show you what you need to do and then to jog the machine you're going to use the remote the remote jog handle in this case our new touchscreen one um, so it's very easy to move the uh, APL arm into the position that you want to program, turn on APL mode, and the thing works automatically. If you don't need it to, do, to work in that mode, you just turn that off and use it like a regular lathe. Pretty straightforward. Let's throw it back to uh, Brian. All right, now we're at the CM1. CM stands for compact mill, and you can see why. Small little machine. Um, this is an ISO 20 spindle. 30,000 RPM standard with a 50,000 RPM optional. So obviously when you have small tools, you need that higher RPM, this machine has it. Automatic tool changer. And this is primarily medical, dental, aerospace, somebody doing some prototyping. 
great little machine. Obviously, it'll fit in a small space. And the cool thing about this is this can run on single phase power. So if you're thinking about putting this in a medical or a dental office, you don't need three phase power. Okay, right next to the CM1, we've got the mill version of the APL. So the same great programming method that Andrew talked about. Everything's programmed through the Haas control using VPS templates, the remote jog handle. Little different configuration. We've got the two grippers, one for loading and one for unloading. Um, same great programming features. And we've also got an air vice provision in here. So obviously when you're running unattended, you're not gonna be opening and closing the doors. Auto door, air vice, complete unattended operation. We're gonna move to my left, toss it back to Andrew, and he's gonna talk about the TM1. Alrighty, TM1P. Now, the TM1 and the TL1 are machines that are equally at home in a production environment or maybe more in a, in a school environment or kind of a inside your garage kind of environment. Really what these machines are about is introducing uh, a CNC machines to someone who's coming from a manual machine background. Um, if we see here, this has got the table and the layout very similar to a knee mill, uh, Bridgeport style machine. Um, but this is a true full CNC machine. Um, in this case, this is the, the TM1P is kind of a the slightly, uh, the slightly improved version of the TM1. TM1 comes at about $31,000. This is $35,000. And for that extra four grand, you get a lot of bang for the buck. You've got a 10, a 10 pocket tool changer, a faster 6,000 RPM spindle. It's really, this kind of takes it from uh, a more manually oriented kind of experience to really a full production CNC machine. Um, this is just a step away from our VF2 style of VMCs. All right, let's move over to the TL1. Um, this is kind of the same concept here. If you're coming from a manually controlled lathe, then this layout's gonna be very familiar. Chuck's right here, steady rest, cross slide. Um, the basic version of this, of this machine comes with a single tool post here. Um, but in this case, we've got a, several options of this machine. We've got the E-hand wheels is what we call them. This is kind of a, a manual method for, for jogging these axes around. You can see here, I can, I can jog these um, very much how you would in a manual machine, but you can also run this in full CNC mode. And that's the beauty of it. If you want to approach it from a manual perspective, that's easy. And also when you're ready to move on to, to controlling it via CNC, that works great. It works great that way as well. And you've got the same style of VPS templates here. I can do a whole bunch of different kinds of features here. All I have to do is enter the important aspects of my part geometry into one of these templates here, and the uh, VPS templates will output a complete program, and I can run that. No need to know G code to start with. So TM1, TL1, both aimed at getting a manual machine operator used to using a CNC. Let's throw it back to, to Brian here on the CL1. Okay, I'm at the CL1. I talked about the CM1 earlier, the compact mill. CL1 stands for compact lathe. And again, you can see why this machine also can run on single phase power. So that's important if you're running in a small shop or a garage or if you're a beginner. Um, but this machine has a lot of fully production features. So let's come under the hood here. First of all, this machine comes standard with an eight station turret. Um, and in this case, this machine has a couple of really cool features. We've got a little parts catcher here, and we've even got live tooling. So you can add a bar feeder. So we've got two different lengths of bar feeders. So if you add a bar feeder, you put the live tooling and a parts catcher on here, you can run this thing fully in production mode. Of course, you can also run it as a chucker lathe and make small parts. Okay, let's go right next door here. And this is what we call the desktop mill open this guy up here so this is a fully functional CNC mill and the great thing about it is even though it's limited on travels it's not really a metal cutting machine it's designed for wood machinable wax things of that nature plastic maybe it is a full CNC machine in the sense that this is not a simulator like you're used to a Haas simulator this is actually a full-blown control so if you learn how to program this desktop mill this same programming applies to a BF2, a DT1, a UMC, any of the machines that we've shown you here. So really geared for beginners and in particular schools. Thanks guys for joining us on this tour of the demo room. We've uh, looked at small machines, large machines. All the way up to five axis machines, a 50 taper, 
Pop. Robot package. Robot package, everything in between. So we're going to do more of these factory spotlights. We appreciate you watching and join us next time for some more of the Haas Factory. Thanks.